Happy Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boate, and I'm so, so, so excited today. Today is going to be royalty. You'll find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the woman on the move. She's a go-getter, hardworking. Let's see who she is this week. Initially, 27-year-old Mary Amega Mensah wanted to be a military officer. However, after senior high school, she could not further her education due to financial constraints. Mary's love for sports influenced her decision to become a footballer. After a brief stint with some local football teams, Mary was involved in a motor accident. While recovering, she tried her hands on barbering. According to Mary, since the feedback was very good, she resolved to go into barbering, a job largely dominated by men. A journey, Mary says, has not been without challenges. I said, 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 I I said, I I had to undergo apprenticeship to perfect my skills. A senior colleague wanted to sleep with me before teaching me how to operate the barbering tools. I ignored him and learned on my own. Mary has worked in the grooming industry for seven years. She currently operates a barber shop at Spencer's in Accra, where she has a good client base. I start work 7 a.m. in the morning and I close 10 p.m. I said, weekdays and today we are not a stroke. I said, Baben, it depends on the day. But to my side, you know, me who day is slow. Saturdays are very busy for me. I work from morning till 11 p.m. Saturday, they meet me down up at 7. Me point at 11. Me in Tinasi. Me in home. To me, they'll bring them a baby power. Some of her clients lauded her expertise, skills, and demeanor. I've known her for like six months ago, from when I was living around. But I've moved out because of how she gets time for you, her shape and everything, the way she talks to you, I like it. She's a very good baba. Even though where I live, there's even a baba in front of my house. But because of how she treats your hair, she gets time for you. I still like to come here and baba every day. I'm down and now, Oba and no mommy direction is so hard. Now, first day I'm a baby meeting. When I'm a bonk or more come out, the gym is so. I have been barbering my hair here for close to a year. She is very skillful. Okay. So, I'm now for no more. I'm also come from the Sawa Yadi. And to Martin Bia, my home for the past one year. To a higher name. Mary, who also does makeup and painting on part time basis, encourage women not to shy away from male dominated jobs. What a man can do, a woman can do even better. They say, it's in the men on the street, I'm a assembly woman. There is dignity in labor. I am well respected in my community because of this job. I feel right. For now, she has no intention of quitting barbering. She wants to open a school to train the youth, particularly women who intend to go into barbering. Mary was full of praise for her mother for supporting her to become a professional barber. Oh, on the low, on the low. So our winning woman for today is Stephanie Benson, the queen of jazz. You are so welcome, Stephanie. Thank you. You are extremely busy. I've been chasing you for I don't know how long. <laughs> and finally, you're here and you're looking amazing. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yes, I'm just celebrating the holidays um, with oh, you guys. Oh, yes. 
yes, yes, yes. yes so yes. I thought I'll dress the part. Yeah, you look you look fantastic. You look amazing. But can I say my full name, please? Because I mean, it's a ritual of mine now. Every sure. interview, I have to tell them my full Ashanti name. Okay. It's Akuya Ohenua Isinim Akotokre Akwasahima. That's your full I name. Just finished. Yes. Really. Yes. Is it? It is my full name. Oh, wow. So yeah, I mean, I was a little bit of a big head when I was young, <laughs> so I think. <laughs> so the Benson is your, your husband's name? No, Benson is my father's name. It's your father's name? Yeah, I know. Most people think it's um. Yeah, it's, because it's you're, 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 you're married to yeah. British. Yeah. But then your, your Asante father's name is Benson? My father wasn't a Asante. I mean, he was from um, Achimoda or Akimoda, as they say. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and my mother's a Asante from royal family. Ah, okay. So it's so, your mom who's... Yeah, my mother okay. was an Abwahi mother second from Ahinamako Kobe. Okay. Um, you know, my previous uncles have been Asante Henry, so... Okay. I sort of, yeah, it's sort of in the, in the blood. But um, my father was Benson Ajipong. Okay. So I took the Benson, I could took the Ajipong. Ah. Did you decide? Did you split Well, no, it? it just sort of happened. Because when I was singing initially, my name was not Stephanie Benson. It was, you know, when I was signed, it was Princess. So, um, it was Stephanie, what, Princess? Yes. Okay. So Stephanie Benson, well, I changed after I left my record company. Mm. Because I, you know, um, I didn't really want to do pop anymore. So it was... Um, so tell us a bit about that. How did you find yourself in pop? How did you get there? Well, I mean, I used to play at the piano bar in London, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, I was initially a musician before I became actually in a dance school because when I was in school, I used to dance all the time. And um, so you went to school here in Ghana? Yes, Holy Child School. Holy Child. You hey, did it. No. Here. Did you go to Holy Child? No, I went to St. Rose's. I didn't go to oh. Holy Child. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I wanted to go to Holy Child. Yeah. But my dad made me go to St. But I love Only Holy Child. Only the best people But went I didn't to Holy know that you went to Holy Child. Oh, Holy Child, yes. Yeah, Holy Co. Oh, Holy Co. Pa. Because all my, my peers were almost two years older than me because I got jumped a few times because I was really bright, even if I say so myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when I went to school, I was like just getting to 10 years old and everybody else was 11 going to, to 12. To boarding school? Yes, I know. Really? I was very young. So, I mean, I, you know, I was... And you went to Holy Child? I went to Holy Child, yes. So um, from the age of nine and I left when I was 14. So, I've, yeah, I went to the UK. Mm -hmm straight after. So in school, I used to sort of do competitions and I used to play the piano because I studied music. In and school? In school, in, in Holy Child. Okay. And, you know, I was a kiss ass. So I used to go and play with the nuns, you know, I played the guitar too. So I would go to the, the convent and we'll play guitar. So, you know. And you didn't want to be a nun? Are you serious? Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, no. Okay. No, but I wasn't interested in boys. I was one of those people that just was not interested in having Anybody talk to me, there's this boy who used to chase after me when I was in school. It's only 12, but I had big breasts, bigger than yours. So, and so I think, you know, I think they felt I was older. And um, yeah, and this guy used to chase, and I just wasn't interested in boys at all when I was growing up. Why? I know, it just didn't interest Was it like me. the nun mentality, or was no, it just? No, okay. the Holy Child girls, some of them were bad. Who. They used to jump <laughs> off the walls and go and go and party. I mean, I wasn't that type. I was like one of those goody, good goody. girls. I was a goody goody. Okay. I mean, I, I took. Um, Would you say you're still a goody goody? Me, you see, in my head, I'm bad, but I'm a good girl. You know, it's just no, in my how head. Can you say because that? I'm so creative in my head. I'm always like thinking of. You know, like it just spontaneous. Do with you me. ever think of what people think about you? Never. You don't. No. Ever. I, no. Like you walk into a place, you never think, "What are people thinking about me?" No. I mean, sometimes you see, we walk into a place and people are looking at you. I don't even notice they're looking at me. So then, I mean, my husband would be like, "Oh, like Mr. Big is the smoking." Like, I'm looking at him. What are you doing? Like, well, he's so <laughs> proud of you. Look you. He's you are his, proud. Yeah, his like royalty. Yes. That's yes. beautiful. So he he loves that, but I don't notice. I don't look. I mean, my children are the same. My children are stunning. I mean, I'm not, you know, anywhere close to how beautiful my girls are, and even my sons. And um, how many kids you have? Five. I have five. You yes. birthed five children. Yeah, I pushed them out of my beds. Yeah, that was not easy. And I can we even, toast to that? Let's toast to that. Listen, let me tell you something, okay? Listen, let, let's toast to that and I'll tell you. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I know, they all... Mm. Well, this is yummy mm. from the one-to-one -one bar. One-to-one -one bar. at the Moving Pick Hotel. Oh, really? Yummy, yummy, Actually, yummy. Actually, it's That's quite really yummy. Nice. It's got some fruits in there, which is You really know cool. what? I, I have one child now. I'm, I, I mean, two more are coming soon. Nice. But after my... I'm not pregnant with twins yet. No, I know. I you mean, said two are coming soon. Coming. <laughs> 
So are coming soon. They're coming soon. I mean, some I'm mean, working on it. Also, you you're practicing a lot. Oh yes, I'm practicing. Oh, I, really? Later on, I'll talk to you. Nice. Later, I'll talk to you. But listen, okay. Uh -huh. My grandmother had ten children. And after I had my one, I went to visit her and I was just looking at her quietly. <laughs> and I was shocked. Because listen, the, the, the age difference between some of, some of my aunties and uncles yeah. are, are 10 months. Oh, 10 wow. months, 11 months, not even one year. 10 children. Oh, your father was a horny boss. Was no, 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 my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> your grandfather, my, my, sorry. My yeah. grandfather, my grandmother had 10. Well, my 10. father had 16. Yeah, but the men, but I'm talking about women who birth. Yes, you know, and so it's that's hard. A, you know, the power of a yes. woman, the strength of a woman, yes. the just, you know, women. We're very, very powerful creatures. Yes. I think we underestimate ourselves mm. and we allow um, the, the women to dictate to um, us. The men? As, the men. I think a lot of, um, of our insecurities come from our men. Why, yeah, tell me why. Why do you think so? I think we just seek validation from men too much. I, I just don't think that's really good because we stop being ourselves. Yes, yes. And but um, do you think it's because you probably don't appreciate yourself? Yes, I think... So that's I what think it is? it's a generational thing mm -hmm. because our mothers always tell us that, okay, oh, come because did the... And I said, you feel who you... You know, it's all good. You still can look after your house. But you have to have a sense of self. I mean, I work and my husband works. So if I come home and I'm tired, I won't be able to sit and he can go and do dinner. Mm. You know, and then but sometimes... Do you, think, do you think it's because of, um, you know, the, his mindset and his culture and all that? Because your it's mindset is British. No, no, no. Man, you see, right? No, no, I'm just asking. Yeah, I know a lot of people, like, people say that. People have to know that. But, you know, this, this show, what I, one thing I love, love, love about the Today's Woman show, we are bringing on amazing women, beautiful women, women who've been through life, going through life, women who have experiences, they come and they share. And people think they're just watching a show. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, they've learned so much. Yeah. So this even can be eye-opening. It can be like, you know, actually changing the mindset mm -hmm. of the narrow-mindedness. Yes, because I think sometimes, it's a lot of that. Exactly. We all bar. You should be cooking. The mm -hmm. man, like somebody can come to your house and your husband comes to serve water and it's like, you don't respect. Hey. And usually they, they see and they say, hey, this is your business. I mean, how can you even say that? Listen, <laughs> some of my friends are married to England. I mean, most of my friends are, um, you know, Caucasian. And mm -hmm. they're married and they serve their husbands. And their husbands expect them to serve it. So you can't so say because about, he's white. It is. It's mm. about the respect that the man gives you and you give the man. Mm. You see, I don't sit back and expect him to do all the cooking all the time. Of course not. Mm. But, you know, if I don't feel like it, it doesn't matter. Sometimes I, I, I'm, he comes home when I'm home and from working, he'll say, I'm cooking dinner today. And I say, oh, cool. Do you I'll enjoy say, his food? Yes. He's as good as me, but he's really good. I how, mean, how long have you been like, married for? How I've married for 30 for? years. 30? 30. 30. Three, Three zero. zero. And you're still in love? Oh, yes. I mean, the thing is, a love thing, in the beginning, it's all, uh, you know, animal, like, yes. And as time goes on, it becomes, it becomes you like a... You grow into love? Yeah. It, no, no. The love just becomes stronger in the sense that you just appreciate each other more. Mm. And then, so that's another development. There's very mm. different cycles of, mm. of love. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, and, and time goes on and it, then it becomes more appreciation and, mm. and respect. Yeah. And then, you know, sometimes if you don't play that really well, then you get used to each other. Then you mm. start to take each other for, for granted. granted. Of course, I mean, I'm no different. That has happened at some point, but mm. I'm very intuitive. Mm -hmm. So I can spot that and go, okay, hey, you know, we're going away on holiday. So there are so many women watching now. I mean, the promo was out a couple of days ago, so I'm sure everybody's on because they want to watch you. Quickly, give ladies watching now one tip to keeping your relationship for however many years. So keeping it as exciting as from the beginning. One tip. You'll be given a lot of tips. This is the first tip. <laughs> I know, because it's very hard to just <laughs> pick one. I think, I mean, everybody knows about respect. So far as you respect each other. And that's not just the woman. I think the man has to respect um, the woman. I always say that if you have an argument, talk it through. Don't be afraid to say it as a woman, because we're always scared to, to say what we feel. Because some of our men, they're really just not accommodating and mm -hmm. listening. Mm -hmm. Our men just need to learn to listen. Mm -hmm. Just listen to your women and watch. Be observant, because men sometimes can disregard how our women are feeling because they don't want to deal with issues. So, so it's easier to walk it. away. Yeah. So it's best that you, know, you watch your partner and see when they're sad. 
Listen, men, I know you watch the Today's Women show as well. It's not just women mm. watching, it's men as well. So learn, pick it quickly. Yeah. You get the best of the woman if you actually notice things about them. Mm. Know when they're sad. Don't avoid it just because you think you might be in the wrong. You know, just okay. So, okay, so communication so, is really communication important. Communication is just so important. Mm -hmm. And women sometimes, we have insecurity issues where your husband has gone somewhere, he's talking to a friend, and then we, you know, who's female, and then you panic. Have, oh you, ever ha have you ever had any issues like that? Well, my, oh, I've had an issue like that. I'll tell you this. One of my best friends, um, well, I thought was my best friend, um, she had an issue with her boyfriend, and she called me once. I mean, I've had three issues like this, but this one, this is the first time. And I just had two children at the time, and she left her husband. She didn't have a place to stay. So she called me and said, could I come and stay with you? And this girl is stunning. I mean, when I say stunning, I mean, so she was a model. And I used to do um, castings as well, as well as when this I was, was singing. In the UK. In the UK. Mm -hmm. And then she, um, so I said, okay, come to me. And she has a son. So she came to me, and um, she was with me a couple of days, and I had to go and do a show. So I left her at home with, your husband. with my husband, the nanny, and, and the kids. And I was away when my husband, the second day I was supposed to come, uh, I, w I asked my husband if I could stay another night because I had a meeting. He said, no, I should come home. I'm thinking, okay, what's happening? So I, I flew back home and my husband was in the room and he said, tell your friend to leave today. I went, oh. Why? So um, I went to her and she says, I was she was very sheepish. So in the end, I just pulled my husband in the room and I said, what happened? He says, he was in the shower and she came into the shower naked. No. So I, um, I no, smiled. Stephanie. Yeah, 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 I smiled and I, I, I went, okay. Um, I, I understand, okay, I, I would tell her. So I went down and I had a shower. So John told me, you know, I don't know what you were thinking, but you have to know that John is not really that type, but it's, you know, I, I think you really yeah. have to leave. So she says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, oh. But I mean, how did I you feel though? Were you hurt? Were you no, no? I mean, were you hurt that your friend? See, no, I don't. I, only because I trust my husband, and also because you know. No, no, no. Of course, you trust your husband. My your friend, husband did I a was, good thing to tell you. But were you angry with your friend? Were no. you upset? Were you heartbroken? No, because that's a, a friend that you trust. I know. But you see, my husband is such a wonderful man that I don't blame anybody for trying. So you know, so can we me, toast to him? Is he watching? Like, yeah, he will watch it. <laughs> he will Hi, have, hey John. I sent him a message, so he will. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Mm. You know, the thing is, when you're everything to your man, and and he knows the boundaries. But I, I respect <clears throat> him so much for that. Oh, my husband, you seriously, know, because because generally, I mean, sorry, and 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 forgive me, men, generally, I mean, for probably what I'm about to say, but I think that I may be wrong as well. But I think that generally, any man would be happy to get something free. Yes. I mean, if well, if that's it's, the you general know, idea, but he isn't yeah. really that at all. I that mean, is um, respect. And this girl was hot. I mean, um, very, everybody won. I mean, actually, she dated um, Pierce Bronson for a little while. Oh, my so God. So she I wasn't just, you know, <laughs> and I know I love that guy. Yeah, I did a yeah, show yeah. and he was there. <laughs> oh, my God. I told my husband to go and stand in the corner. Because <laughs> I spent all the time with Pierce Bronson. And we had, like, I have pictures. It's on Facebook, actually. And I was like, we yeah, chatted. Yeah, he he, he actually even came to my, my room and sat and chatted with me. He came with his two sons. Oh, I was like, can okay, you see where my eyebrows are going now? I know. Okay, I so let's it. come back. So then what happened? Yeah. So my <laughs> friend, I just booked her a taxi and I booked her a hotel and, and she, she went off. But why did she do? Do you think she was like, I don't know. I think she just, you know, when somebody sees what you have and they just want it and she just tried, you know, mm. she, 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 she tried a lot. So what did you lot. learn from that? Well, I mean, I and learned, told you, I and learned I'll tell that you I why I'm my, asking. I'm, I learned I'm, that my husband would... Um, absolutely loves me and mm. I'm enough for him and that was enough and that me. was even way in the beginning yes, so even the beginning, now my children should be like stronger thing. well yes because I mean I remember we I did a um, a show uh, for like, London Fashion Week in London mm -hmm. I think it was 1997 and um, I was the very first um, singer they've ever had on London Fashion Week wow and and um, before it started to become a big thing and I remember I was backstage getting dressed and all the models were around and my husband, my, you know, they're all getting changed. Nobody's shy because yeah. we're getting changed in front they of do. each other. My husband's sitting there and he's watching these gorgeous six-foot models like getting dressed and little me, you know. And um, 
he just wasn't faced and a couple of them came up to him because my husband is pretty suave you know he he you know that's how he got me he's not really the best looking guy <laughs> on this earth but he really is just he just got this calmness about him you know and um and they're all coming on to him and i just sat back and i was just looking the same way he is with me when i have people around me and i'm singing and I'm, he just mm. he's just very proud he knows yeah. that we're just he knows confident. What you've got. but mind you all my friends in london all of them all white, my white friends are all divorced so when people say because he's a white man i look at them and i think are you guys mm. this you see that kind of assumption gives excuses for our black men Mm, right. And that's not cool, right? Right. right. You know, because right. now you know, was that an issue for you and your family? I mean, you moved yes. to the UK, you met like a white man, you know, and all of that. Was that an issue? Because yes. I remember, I mean, when I was much younger, much, much, much younger, and some of my aunties had gone to maybe the UK or the US, and ah, what is it? Well, Bruni, have you heard? He has gone to take a Bruni, left a Ghana man, you know, that kind of thing. So, what was that like? And how were you also accepted by his family? Yes. Because then it wasn't as, you know, popular, you know, as it is now. Yeah. You know, so what was that like? 89. 89. when we got married, yes. And um, my uncle, I have to say, I mean, the long and short of it, it was he wasn't happy at all. I mean, actually, in fact, that, so, so as, I mean, to go as far as to say he, um, he, he didn't want to pay for the wedding. Actually, he didn't. In the end, my husband paid for it. Um, you got wedding and, here or in no, the UK? No, in the UK. Okay. We did the African thing. My husband did all the whole shebang. Oh, we did wow. the African That's thing, beautiful. but without my uncle either. You know. But my, my mother was happy for me. But you see, I'll tell you why my mother was happy for me, because she had cancer at the time. And mm. I think my mother's not she a conformist. Um, and I think this is what I'm, sort of, I've learned. And she was just about being happy. And met John for the first time and saw how John was with John. My husband had never dated a black man, a woman ever. How, so how did, he, how did he meet you and what, what was it that struck him? If you I, I know, I don't know. Maybe it's your deep dimple there. I don't know. But, you know, what, what no. was it that, you know... Well, what, he first was saw it? me in the restaurant of the company we worked for. They had a, a he, beautiful you restaurant. You worked with him? No, I worked for my uncle, okay. who was a consultant for De Beers. Okay. And I was very young. So I was studying in the company to learn how to use, at that time, was telex machines and, yes, you know, whatnot. Yes. It's a long time ago. You guys know what telex <laughs> machine is. <laughs> It's a new version of the iPhone, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it was like the old time. And um, I, I was, he was running the, um, that type of IT. And I remember I, uh, I saw him. And I think he, saw, he said he saw me first in the restaurant. And I was in a blue coat, a big blue coat. And I walked in to get to the canteen. I'm just smiling like I'm, I've been listening to her. Like... <laughs> Like a love story. You no, know, I know he. It was funny he talked about it. You should, you should oh, let, let hear him me, talk about me, it. Tell us. And I was usually by myself, usually because I mean I was very confident, confident in my own company. I don't, I'm not really one for friends like lots and lots of friends. You know, I, I like my own company. Even now. Even now, I'm, I'm very much like that. Mm. I don't really want a lot of people around me. I just mm. like my own company. And mm. right now, I'm just lucky. I have five children, so they're always around. Me. <laughs> so I walked in. I think he told me, or his friend told me that as soon as I walked in, the first time he saw me, he looked at his friend and said, I'm going to marry that girl. Really? And he'd never been in a black family. I mean, or even have any friends who were black. So when I heard that, I, I did laugh. I'm thinking, really? He said, yes, it's just that he knew it. So he pursued me for three years. And the fourth year is when I said, yes. Really? And I said, yes. He just kept going. And, but I was young, so I wasn't really in interested in dating. And, I was like 16, 17. He didn't know that. He thought I was older. But, um, so he just kept going. And wow. He, every and time, he's moved to Ghana with you? No, no, no. Oh, he hasn't? I haven't moved to Ghana. Oh, you haven't? I mean, it's like I have two homes. Okay, okay. This so you're here Ghana. sometimes and then yes. you're in the I still UK. have to work abroad, you know. Okay. That's my money earner. Okay. So tell us what you're doing now. And there's so many exciting things. And I really want you to tell us about what you're doing for breast cancer now. Yes. That is amazing because so many women are going through it. Yes. And, Too many. and I just love the fact that you are able to just say, hey, I've got this and this is how I came out of it and, and, and all of that. And, you know, there are some women who are dying because they don't want to have their breasts cut off mm -hmm. because, other, you, know, I, I, you know, I heard one woman say one time, me, your babium, I'll not be, I'll not be a woman anymore. So she died. Yes, I hear that a lot. And I mean, I've been doing, um, helping people, trying to help at least, 
people for a very long time. This is not the first, um, I mean, so now I'm doing, it's been ongoing for about three years now mm -hmm. on, on and off when I'm here and when people come to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went through it obviously four years ago. Um, at the time I had the School of Performing Arts for the girls and we just started off for about a year or so, maybe even two years, and then the cancer hit. So um, I tried to keep that going. It wasn't really quite working because it needed me here. And um, um, when I was told it was breast yeah. cancer, I and also an ovarian cancer because I had both at the same time. What? Yes, I know. I thought it was only breast. So, no, no. So what was it? Were you like falling sick? Falling? What was it? No, my aunt was actually dying on um, in the Christmas period when I found out. It was the Christmas. She was. We found out she was dying. So we we're going to the hospital a lot to keep her company. She was dying of what? If so, you don't mind me asking. So bowel cancer. Okay. So okay. Um, yes, and you know this was a vibrant, amazing woman, and she she, she just became, um, you know, just. Uh, like a, almost a skeleton. It was, it was awful to see and it was killing because that was my mother. My mother died when I was 26. So she put, pretty much took over. So it, it killed me. And I became very ill while she was in hospital. And um, the night before, I sat with her all, all night um, hoping that you know, one of us would be there when it happened. Yeah. And unfortunately, I was ill the next day, so I, shouldn't, I couldn't go and she died that morning. Mm. So it sort of really affected me, and then I thought, let me go and check, because my mother died of breast cancer. Mm. So, and my grandmother, oh, and my aunt. Okay, okay, okay. So I, I went to go and check and did a smear test, and they found some irregularities, and I thought, oh, heavens. And also, you know... Um, Had you done it before? I, yeah, I do you know it every a woman, year. There's a woman who, who never, even till today, have so never... So a smear test yeah. is the most simplest way of just checking your womb to make sure everything is okay, mm -hmm. and I think every woman should do it. because. Mm -hmm. Some of our men carry the, the, um, the little sexual disease called HPV. It's not serious, but that can sometimes turn into cancer. Mm. So mo every woman has, over the age of 40 has to have a smear test at least once a year. Yeah. You know, um, nowadays cancer is hitting women a lot earlier, 35. So mm. I advise women to have the smear test from 35, maybe every couple of years. Yeah. But you really, really need to go and have a smear test. I know sometimes the issue of money, this is where I think we need to have things in place for women over 40, especially ones yeah. with a history. Yeah. Because it's so unfair that women are dying from something so simple when it's, you know, early you detection just, yeah. is, you know, it's such a... Just hit it yeah. Mm. So the breast cancer, let's say, going to have a, a, um, a, the check, you mm -hmm. know, just going for a mammogram is... I don't think it's even that expensive nowadays. Mm. You know, just save some money. Some people have been doing it for free now. Well, thank God. Yeah. You know, there's so many fake charities out there that I don't like it. So mm. I don't really want to affiliate myself with any of these small so-called charities that really just do very little. So I only help one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I can mm. only help one-on-one -on -one. Mm. Um, because I'm not raising money. Yeah. So when I found out, for me, it was no question. It would be like, it was, okay, what do I need to do? I want to live for my children. I have five. I'm not leaving them. I mean, it was full of, and I wasn't scared. I'm thinking, take the breast away. Most people are going to say, I'm older, so it didn't matter. Listen, my job, there's no forgiveness for imperfection. Mm. But I don't... But, were you, but some, some, some married women as well, you know, have the fear that, oh, my husband won't, won't like me anymore. He won't be sexually attracted to me anymore. Because, because the problem is deeper than just the, um, the cancer at the time. The problems have been there. Mm, ah, okay, so I see what you see, mean. See, if you if you have a man that yeah, you know that loves, loves you, you unconditionally, yeah. because there's a woman I'm talking to in in the UK. Her name is Abna. Hi, Abna. I know you've been watching. <laughs> she <laughs> is she's married to a black man, and when she found out that she needed to have a mastectomy, the guy I I met them two together because she was a bit concerned. So are you doing like coaching, counseling? Anybody comes. I mean. For almost anybody who, yes, I do. I love it. I well, love I'm going to hook to you up with some people. Oh, please. Okay. Okay. And I talked to the both of them. The guy said, listen, I love my wife. She can do, you know, I want her to live. So he was there, supported, and he makes her feel so special. This mm. too. It's a black, uh, you know, both Ghanaian and, uh, mm. people, and they live in the UK now. And it's just such a beautiful thing. So when people but you say know because you're married to a white man, I, said, not I can give you so that. many examples of them. people who, you but know. But you know, funny enough, there are some women as well who say that, you know, they, 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 they love the feeling that they get, you know. Through the breast. Yes. But you know that that's not the ultimate place 
for sexual heightening. You know, women, yes, it's just titillating, but you cannot, can I just go deeper? I mean, it's not really, <laughs> I mean, the breast alone will not make you, you know, it's just one of those things that you feel that like your husband likes to side. But even if it's reconstructed, men, it's a visual thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're lucky enough to be able to reconstruct, he can touch it, make it, I mean, and I make the right noises when my husband touches it. But I've taken everything. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> So we're right back, we're here with Stephanie, and I've always been meaning to ask you, how are you able to balance your family with your career? You know, I follow you on Instagram, I see your work, I've, I've known you as well for, for quite a while, I know how busy you yeah. are, but you're also quite a family woman as well. You know, yeah. I see you together with your husband, your children, so how are you able to balance the two? You know, it, it's not easy, but it's, it's achievable. I mean, I manage it only because I have a supportive husband as well. Um, and if let's say I'm going away for more than two weeks, when they were younger, it's a lot harder. Mm. Because if mm. I have to do a show and I'm doing a tour for maybe two or three weeks, what my husband would do is after maybe every weekend, he'll bring the kids over and then we'll spend time and then bring them back. And maybe if I'm gone for more than two weeks, I'll fly back home and spend time. You know, it depends on what the kids are doing, what ages mm. they were. I mean, I remember so many times when the kids have been backstage when I've been doing mm. a show, even when I did one for Prince Charles, they were backstage and and my breast was just getting bigger and bigger from breast milk because I had to breastfeed and, and I see Prince Charles holding my son, oh, like kind of can't live so, cute. <laughs> so it's like really, you know, it depends on, on where I am. It, it works when they're backstage with me. So they've met every kind of celebrity. So they, they're not really faced. Um, by and your husband never gets insecure about that? No. Because I, some men, because some men can't know. handle that. No. I mean, their they're, they're wives on stage, everybody like staring, depending on what they're wearing as well, I how mean, you I'm dress. Me, I sit on men and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. some and, things and pop that up a, when you're sitting on a man. It's really cool. Like, so they're like, you. No, but how does he feel? He's very confident in have himself. You, so have you like, ever discussed it with him? Yeah, sometimes I, because I, you, I you're, just, you're probably just assuming that he's okay with it. I speak, we, listen, no, me, do you I'm, talk about it? I'm a big male. I ask every question. My husband and I sometimes go and say, what do you think about that? Was that good? Was that good? He says, that was really cool. You were funny there. But that guy, he sort of touched. Let me tell you, I remember my husband's so cool. Pierce Bronson, uh, name it, whomever I've signed for. And I've signed for some huge names. But I remember I did a show here, 233. And my husband always knows the type I'm going to go for. And one time, what's his so name? So you never go for him? John? Yeah. Oh, I mean, he's already mine. So, I mean, I don't like, <laughs> have to, you know, try hard at that. But I was in Ghana doing something at 233. This is in Ghana. After all these big, huge shows I've done abroad, I was um, singing and I came down and Majid was in the audience. And uh, my husband never met Majid before. But Majid was in the audience. And I remember walking up to him and I, and you know Majid is an actor. So he started to play and he slid in his chair and I'm sitting on him like this. And then, and I, I remember when I came, my husband said, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> because Majid and I were messing around and I was like sitting so on him. So he was just acting, really. He was, yeah, wasn't... Majid was acting. His wife was sitting right next to him. And I, we, we, I was just so it wasn't, messing. So it wasn't offensive? Yeah, but he that's never... the only time. Only time after all these years that he actually was a bit like, okay, who's that Never guy? again. Yeah, because Majid, because most people, when I go to them, they're like, shy. You know, but Majid knew exactly what I was going to be doing. So we he just, was like, we in it, like, like, oh, like, uh, you know. So it was so funny. <laughs> and that's when my husband actually just said, who was that guy? I said, that's Julia's brother. I mean, he's a young little but boy. You know, you know, some people don't believe that you and Akosia are actually sisters. You're actually, oh, what, same yeah. parents? Same mother, same father. Akosia Japon. Mm -hmm. I love her so much. She was one of the reasons I tried to, and I won't even try it. Oh, no, please. I mean, we'll stop talking about the robot. Let's oh, not talk about the robot anymore. Oh, I tried it, Mom. Yeah. Oh, be friends. People are coming on, on, on um, Instagram saying, oh, your sister, you can't beat and dancing. I say, ah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, robot. Uh. No, they won't pound to me. Hey, they may be a boom boom, but it's fine. But are you, will, will the two of you ever do anything together? Oh, yes, we have a song. We just recorded a song called The Door. You, you and, and Akosia? Yes. Oh, fantastic. It's, it's a, an amazing track. And the whole song is dance based. Oh, wow. So we're, we're doing lots of dance sequences. You know, when I first came here, although I danced, 
I know our closest territory is the dance and the singing, yeah, so yeah, yes. I choose not to. Mm. So my, I'm more of a vocal performer yeah, she here. Is more of a but dancer. in the UK, I have dancers. We do a lot of dance. But you know, my kind of dancing over there is like white people dancing. You people, <laughs> <laughs> I do my, you know, my flips and my spits and my, you know, you guys well, like. I saw, I, I, you know, I saw a like, split recently, which was oh, a split. I know. I, did, I, 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 did. I saw that. Yeah, split. in the splits. Split, I thought, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> Bloody Taylor. I should sue him. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> but yeah, it was like, I'd done the split on radio, so I'm just doing it. Eh. And then it's the, the whole thing, I'm thinking, oh, I think. But I mean, I'm not. So I'm are not you trying. going to launch it? Are you going to do you know, Yes, we're going, going to, to launch it. We're actually supposed to have done the video. Um, very here. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I, I flew here for, for it. Oh, I can do fantastic. something for you investing in it. And she's in Canada. She's taking some time off. So she, you know, it's delayed everything. But, you know, we'll get but it But I done. have to say, you guys look amazing. Seriously. For my your mother, ages. No, seriously. My mother was amazing. Because she is also beautiful. Yes. When you see her yeah. close up like this, her skin, everything, you guys are blessed. No, my mother, I think, um, Black none of us crack. are a patch on my mother. My wow. mother was absolutely stunning. I mean, we'd go to places and people would just stop when she walked in. She wow. goes to a lot of funerals. So then, you know, because she's a queen mother, so she'll turn up and everybody will stop. And my mother was just walking with her big glasses and she'll, hey, it's so sexy. Show, show me pictures later. I'll show you. I'd love to see. So, um, I think so what we'll are you doing as well? I think you're raising something for... Yes, with well, the cancer thing, I, you know, I have this motorbike, this yes. tri Oh, I've seen, I've seen it. And I say you have people eye it. So I'm thinking, mm, mm. maybe I should do a raffle. Put it out there to everybody. I mean, you may have to save a little bit if you haven't got much money to get <laughs> um, to buy a raffle. But you know, the raffle, I don't know how much I'm going to put it yet. But you know, it so will be people to rent it. like three figures. No, just to buy a raffle. Okay. So you buy that. There'll be other prizes as well. Okay. It won't just okay. be the bike. Okay. Okay. But the bike is the main attraction that you're giving away. Yes. Yeah, so you, it's a raffle. So come, we'll you know come buy a raffle and at the end of the day trust me i'll make sure it's legit i know a lot of people might think <laughs> you know and i don't do listen don't put me in that category at all otherwise i wouldn't even bother it's not like i, need to. It, I have two other reason? bikes what are UK. you what are you doing i want to for? raise the money whatever we make to go obviously outside of expenses that you know like bloggers and payments of you know whatever and um, to put into cancer you know some of the people that i help a lot of them are still Here going through yeah in ghana of oh, course wow. You know, a lot of them are still going through cancer. A lot of them cannot work because they can't pay the rent yeah. and, and pay the kids' school fees and whatnot. I really am there to enable these women mm. to So how do you find life. women like that? They come to me. They find me on social media. And the thing with me is I read all my messages. I mean, it might take me time to find yours, but I, who, whomever has come. But I will get to it eventually. So I read all my messages. And some I respond to, and some I call directly. Mm, and you that's know, lovely. one of the ladies that's I helped lovely. actually, she's just about to get married, and she's had a mastectomy on one breast. Sarah, hey. oh wow! So I mean, so people, there's a life after, you know. So don't give up on yourself. There's life after. Somebody's gonna love you. You know what? I'd like you to 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 send a message to women out there who admire you, love you, love your energy, your spirit you know, the sort of like joy that you just, you know, always exuberate. Going through some sort of hardship in life, it doesn't have to be cancer. It could be in a relationship, it could be in work, at work, it could be emotionally, mentally, I don't know, anything. You know, speak to somebody and just say something to them that would just give them that life. Yeah, the thing is, everybody's um, trials is very different. So what you say to one person would be very different. It's like having a ch um, children with different personalities. So all I, you know, so it's, it's hard to, to give one advice to people going through different things because that sometimes doesn't apply. So all I really just want to say is, whatever it is you're going through, do not compromise yourself because it's very easy to do that when you have people coming at you at all different angles. Mm. So as a powerful woman, you stay true to yourself by recognizing who you are. You don't conform to or get, seek validation from anybody you know yes you take people's you know um criticism Chris, whatever yeah. in, in, into consideration but first and foremost it has to be about you and when you find out this about you then everything else falls into place and you stay true don't pretend to be something that you're not because what happens is you know just just to be accepted because then all you're doing is you're denying yourself. Yes, you're being fake. And as soon as you deny yourself, yeah. your whole life comes to a standstill. And enough, you're never ever happy because you, you don't know what you. you want. 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's always about you. Mm. So think about that first and also say, write down what it is you're sad about. Write down all the things that make you happy and try and see the things that make you happy can cancel some of the bad things that you feel. Mm. You know, health is everything. Your mm. health is what determines how you look, how you feel. And, and I think people forget that. So don't shy away from, from things that you need to do. If you're feeling unwell, you know, and you think it's, seek help, reach yeah, out to me. Yeah. And so this is happening, I'm not sure what it is. It might just be a boil, you know, some people yeah. say that. And we're just talking strictly about cancer. Yeah. But do your checks as well, I mm. mean, it's important. Involve your husband in things that you're going through as well. Mm. Say with the breast, for instance. Mm. You know, sometimes you can check yourself, but get your husband to also feel and make it a fun thing, yeah. you know. And it may not be if you find something, but when you find something, at least he's involved in it. Yeah, so he when knows. Involved, yes. Yes, 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 you know. yes, yes. And I think that's really important. I mean, look, watching you, obviously you love yourself. Now, I'm doing this thing, you know, okay, I've started this campaign, self-love campaign. So I have a gift here for you. Uh, I'm, giving, I'm giving all my guest gifts, okay? And this is your love pillow, your <gasps> Rene Q love pillow. Do you know, I had one made for my husband. Can you believe pillow. it? Yes. Oh. And he's, he puts it on uh, the back of his chair in, in the car. Ah. And, and I love it. You well, know, this, sometimes he sits this on it. This is a special one. Yeah, when he's, you know, he misses me, he sits on it. I'm thinking, cool. Oh. I'm so bad. Well, I know. well, this is my <laughs> love pillow to you. Now, now, the reason I started doing this, okay, I, I, I always wanted, you know, women to start telling themselves good things about themselves, things they, they love, love about themselves. This is like a self-love pillow. I want you to tell us one thing you love about yourself. Now, this pillow really is just for, for women to be able to, like, sometimes you're feeling down, you could just hold it. Say, Renee, you're special. You know, you're unique. There's something about you nobody else has. To encourage yourself. So this is my gift to you, and I want you to tell us one thing you love about you. I love the fact that I'm able to love. Oh, that's all because I, I just, I just love irrespective. Wow. Yeah, and I think that's how it should be. I don't judge. Mm -hmm. I just I listen and then you know, um, but I don't judge. There's mm -hmm. there's no reason to judge people. You don't know what they've gone through. Yeah. So just I love the fact that I have the ability to not judge and just love unconditionally. Oh, I feel like hugging you there. Ah! I'll have my self-love pillow. <laughs> and this is a gift from Yaz. They're one of oh, our sponsors, wow. okay? And they have also chosen to give all my beautiful guests nice. a gift. So you've got so many things in there. You've got your sanitary oh, no. towels, baby wipes, toothbrushes, toothpaste. You could give I've some I've had a out. hysterectomy. I can't, you no, know, no, I don't believe it. Don't give it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You have, people, you, you, you have people sending you DMs. I Go know. and read all the DMs and I'll give somebody yes. a gift. Yeah. Tell them. I, I love got doing this that, actually. at the Today's Woman Show, on the Today's Woman Show. This is a gift I'm not you. giving anybody this, though. No, no, no. No, That's this mine. is... No. And I'll come looking for it. Oh, and squeeze yeah, it and hoarder. tell yourself how special you are. We'll be I right back. This money. <laughs> <laughs>Thank you so much for joining us today on the Today's Woman Show. I'm sure you've been as blessed as I have, you know, from everything that we've learned. And one thing that I really did take out of it, women, is it's really, really important for us to keep our relationships, every relationship heightened by our communication. It's really, really important how we speak to our husbands, our children, our colleagues, our workers, you know, our friends. You are today's woman. Make it work. Don't miss it next week, Saturday at 11 a.m. on TV3 and on DSTV279. And many thanks to my sponsors, to Morven Pick Ambassador Hotel for this beautiful set, to Yaz, to GTP, and the Rene Q Self Love Pillow for pushing and pressing on for women to love themselves. You are today's woman. See you next week and stay blessed.